This is 10.2 product and quotient of functions. Product means to multiply, so we could just have a new function here, and it's the product or the multiplication of two functions. And we can also write it like this, f multiplied by g, and it's a closed circle, as we use sometimes for multiplication. Quotient means divide here, and we could take two functions and divide one from the other and create a new function. We could also write it like this, f divided by g of x. Now for this one, we may create non-permissible values because we're putting something in the denominator, so we'll have to watch out for that. Our first example, we have f of x given and g of x given. One's a linear, one's a radical equation. And we wanna find this new equation, h of x. That's where we multiply the two together. So first we multiply f, then we multiply g. And since they are not the same, this one's a radical, this one's not, we can't multiply them together. We need brackets around this linear. Do not leave those brackets out or it will be incorrect. Now we want to find the domain and range, so for the domain at least, we look at this radical. We want our answer to be real, and so we want this thing here, this radicand, to be greater than or equal to zero. So do some algebra to solve for x. x is greater than or equal to negative 5 over 4. So that's our domain. Let's write it in interval notation. Negative 5 over 4 to infinity. And the range. Now the range, we can do some things, but for this course, we are just going to check our calculator and find the range from there. So this is how the function looks. And we want, looks like a minimum here because it starts here, goes down, and then curves back up and this continues on. So our range is checking our calculator. It would be negative 6.7 to infinity. The next one is f divided by g. So f is our linear, x minus three, and g is our radical, the square root of four x plus five. And we want to find the domain. This time, we still have to worry about the radicand here being greater than or equal to zero. But now it can't equal zero because it's in the denominator. So we do similar algebra to what's up there, and we would get greater than negative 5 over 4, but not equal this time. And same with the range. We want to do the same thing as we did before. Just look at the graph and see what the graph is doing. In this case, it looks like the graph goes all the way down to negative infinity and slowly goes up to infinity, and so the range is all real numbers. In interval notation, it would look like that. The last one on this page is the opposite, or the reciprocal, so we've got the g of x on top, and f of x in the denominator. Now we have this radicand needs to be greater than or equal to zero, but we've also got this denominator. This cannot equal zero. And so x minus three cannot equal zero. So that means x cannot equal three. And we have to worry about that because when we build our domain here, we've got greater than or equal to negative five over four. And we can go all the way up to three. We can't include three. And then we can keep going with 3 to infinity. And the range, 
how does this thing look? Well, we need to graph it. Take a look here. It's pretty neat. This one looks like it goes all the way down to negative infinity down here and goes all the way up here. Just how far? Well, if we use negative 5 over 4, that's going to be our 0. And this one goes all the way to positive infinity and comes down, down, down. But just how far? What is the horizontal asymptote of this graph going to as x goes to positive infinity? We need to look at this. We say this one is the greatest power in the top is x to the power of 1 half and the greatest power in the denominator is x to the power of 1. So the power in the top is less than the power in the bottom. That means that our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So this thing should come all the way down to very, very infinitely close to 0. But this catches the 0. So that means that we've got everything, y, e, r. Example 2, we're given p of x and q of x and r of x. And we're trying to make the equation of s of x. Let's put those together and see what it looks like. We've got q of x first, p of x minus r of x. And lucky us, we've got a common denominator. So we can actually put these together, 2x squared plus 4x minus x squared. Remember, the minus applies to both terms here. Let's collect up like terms for the numerator here. 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared plus 4 minus 13 minus 9. Now that looks nice. That's a difference of perfect squares, so we can factor that. x minus 3, x plus 3. And now we can also cancel these out. Before we do, we realize that these are matching factors, and so they're going to create a point of discontinuity at x equals 3. So when we cancel these out, we're left with s of x is equal to x plus 3. Find our coordinates of the point of discontinuity after we've removed this is s at 3 equals 3 plus 3 that equals 6. So our point of discontinuity is at 3, 6. So when we do our domain and range, we could say x is such that x cannot equal 3, but it can be any other real number. And the range is y is such that y cannot equal 6 but it can be any other real number. We look at this, this is very nice. It's a slope y-intercept form, and it's just a linear line with a hole in it. If we look at the graph, sure enough, that's how it looks. Example three, we want to find the equation of b of x and its domain and range. b of x is just a of x squared. Should be easy. Let's take a of x and square it. Remember to square the coefficient and the radical. So 2 squared is 4. And the radical squared is, oh, we can cancel that out. So just x minus 5. Now that's good enough. There's no reason why we need to do anything else. But if you feel like it, 4x minus 20 would also be acceptable. I mean, that's our slope y-intercept form. Now what's the domain and range? Well, we can't forget where we came from. Although this is just a linear now, it wasn't. We've simplified it into a linear, but it wasn't starting like that. So consider this a of x here. It's a regular radical, and it's been shifted right five units and stretched vertically by a factor of two about the x-axis. So one, two, three, four, five. Now it looks like this. And if I square it, this looks like that. So it, it doesn't um, automatically 
have a negative side to it, and we've got to take that into consideration. So our original equation here, our radicand needs to be greater than or equal to zero, and so x needs to be greater than or equal to five. So an interval notation, that would be our domain. The range, well, we can see from the graph that the smallest range value would be zero. Example four, we have the graph given and not the equation. Now this one's easy enough that we could find the equation and work with it, but let's practice working with the graph. We've got u divided by v at two. So this is really, it, if it helps, you can do it like this. This is just u at two divided by v at two. We can get those values from this graph. So u at two is negative two and v at 2 is negative 3. And then we can just simplify that. Let's do the other way around. v at negative 2 divided by u at negative 2. We check the graph here. v at negative 2 is negative 1. And u at negative 2 is 6. All right, uh, u at 4, u at 4 is 0, and so it really doesn't matter what this is unless it's undefined. Let's go find that. v at negative 6 is 1, 0 times 1 is just 0. Here we've got it written a different way. Uh, u times v at 0, so we've got u at 0, which is 0 again, and v at 0, which is negative 2, and multiply those together, and we get 0. Now for the last one I got pretty creative. We've got this mess here, u at negative 2 times v inverse at negative 2 divided by v at negative 2 squared. All right, u at negative 2, so up there is 6. Let's leave inverse for a second. v at negative 2 is negative 1. When we square it, that's just going to become 1, so that goes away. Now let's find this v inverse. We can find that by taking each point and taking the inverse of each point. So this one is negative 2, negative 1. That will become negative 1, negative 2. This one is 0, negative 2. That will become negative 2, 0. This one is uh, 2, negative 3. So that will become negative 3, 2. All right. Looks like we got this kind of thing happening. So this is our inverse line, and we need v inverse at negative 2. So find negative 2 on that line there, and it looks like it's now 0. So once we multiply and divide that, we just get 0. Example 5, our functions are now represented with tables. So we have p at 2, which is 20, and q at 2, which is 0. Now, 20 divided by 0, we'll put that in quotations because that can't happen. This is undefined. Next one is q at negative 2, is negative 5, divided by p at negative 2, which is 4. Next one, p at 1, which is 0, times negative 3, and that equals 0. And last, p at 0 is 9, and q at 0 is 1. 9 times 1 is 9. Example 6, we have f of x given and h of x, but this time we want to know g of x, and that's in here. So 
We're going to do some algebra with the functions to isolate g of x. We're just going to divide both sides by f of x. So we get rid of it on this side, and now we have g of x. So g of x is equal to our h of x. divided by f of x. And wonder if we can divide those. Let's see. We can use some synthetic division here. We'll take the root of this equation, negative 3. That means we'll be adding here. We'll use the coefficients 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. Bring down the 1 and multiply and add and multiply and add and multiply and add and what do you know that means that x plus 3 is a factor the remainder is 0 and so we can just write our final answer here example 7 we have g of x and h of x and we're trying to find f of x looks like we need to do some algebra to rearrange this so we can solve for f of x so we can divide both sides by h of x, and we can multiply both sides by f of x. That will give us f of x is equal to g of x divided by h of x. Let's fill in the equation and see what it looks like. x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8 divided by x plus 3. Now for this one right here we see that x plus 3 is in the denominator and so we cannot have a value of negative 3 for x otherwise we'd be dividing by 0. But we, we look back up here and we see f was actually in the denominator of this function here and so we can't have f being equal to 0 either. That means that the numerator cannot equal 0. So we need to find when does this cubic equal 0 and we just check our calculator. We can see that we've got zeros at negative 1, at 2, and at 4. Or if we spent the time and factored that we would find x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 4 would be the factors. So here's f of x equation. Can't simplify. We don't have a common factor numerator and denominator here, but these are the non-permissible values. This is relations and functions 1, composite functions. This is some homework you can try. Have some fun. Yay!